right after World War II, a lot of the art that was made in this country, both from immigrants and then a lot of the returning GIs right out that took advantage of the GI Bill. It was like an influx of European and American art, or what was to be considered American art, and a lot of the transition from uh, figuration into abstraction, that, that period of art. It's pretty much where I pick up on art in general. That's where my study sort of began with painting. For me personally, it was the period right after about, let's say, 1945 up until the present. It's that risk-taking aspect keeps the work process fresh. In other words, if you keep challenging yourself, you find new ways to do just about anything. I wouldn't call it inspiration, but I would think of it more as just simply a new new way to look at it. I try to invent new ways to look at what I do, and I've found a way to organize that a little bit better in the last five years in terms of day-to-day -day work habits, day-to-day -day variations on that, you know, variations on how to work. And that has helped me a lot because it allows me to slip in and out of a, different kinds of work modes where I don't, it always stays fresh. Undergoing a liver transplant, which I did about a year ago, sort of turned everything I thought about life in general on its head. I mean, I don't think about things the same at all. Uh, forget about art and painting. We're talking about, you know, mortality, just being that close to not being here. That led into a a wider range of thoughts about what painting meant to me, what I was going to do for the rest of my life, how I was going to proceed with the next body of work. So I've kind of broken the process down into phases where, although I know what I'm going to do, I only know to a certain extent of what each phase is going to look like. Part, let's say one phase might be simply drawn or the following phase might be a layer of very thick paint, or the following step might be to focus more on composition or balance or whatever formal uh, arrangements that occur to me. Usually I do one step, like put a large wash of color on a blank canvas that in immediately suggests a whole range of topics. The paintings I'm doing now are composed of about five different stages that they go through. Uh, sometimes I'll abbreviate one, sometimes I'll manipulate another, all in, in service of trying to make the, the, the overall goal a, a kind of path to a completed work. A lot of abstract painting is abstract to the point where it, it eclipses the, the viewer's comprehension. I don't try to get to uh, magical or ethereal or overly academic uh, with what I do. I try to make it pretty simple. Some shapes appear to have some symbolic qualities. That's just purely accidental and I, I kind of embrace the accidental given the fact that I've already in my mind set it up like a jazz chart, like a piece of music that you uh, vary from. But as these things accumulate, that's when it gets interesting. Some of the processes that I was just talking about um, could be exemplified in this painting. Basically, you know, I try to keep it as spontaneous and fresh as possible, leaving a blank canvas there. Not just waiting and waiting and waiting and purposefully leaving it out, but it just happened that way. But if I can do that, that to me is quintessential to the work um, in that it shows its evolution on some level. I started with the green um, where I pretty much thought of it as a rectangular form initially and then it became just a kind of green cross, a very thick paint from top to bottom to side to side and then I, in the middle of that I kind of stopped and liked that sort of cruciform. In this painting, I began it a little bit differently in that I worked with three different 
colors initially. I started with green, red, sort of grayed out black. I didn't develop kind of a weave with the paint um, and s s developed that to be a, a, a shape that had some dominance. And then I sort of echoed it with this one here by doing so I kind of simultaneously set up a, a narrative, in my mind, a, a kind of narrative with the shapes sort of echoing each other or interacting with each other. Sets up a, a depth of field that um, sort of is a throwback to early uh, abstraction in the push-pull sense of the word, the whole idea of colors receding and, or forms receding in space and moving to the front of the surface. The thing that uh, painting empowers me to do is to sort of capture a a glance really uh, a moment and it can continue to do that because you never look at it the same way it's still there when once it's considered finished if there was a theme that carried over in my work it would be that it has uh, the same experience as in life where you're cognizant of a moment but and you really don't let it go but the cumulative effect is that it uh, informs you somehow, especially uh, on a visual level. It becomes part of your psyche. It generally comes down to a feeling of rejuvenation. Uh, you know you did the best you could, or you know everyone liked it, or some people didn't like it, or the whole thing was a mistake, or whatever. It's just this kind of exciting experience that doesn't end, it just starts all over again. Not like a tape loop, but it's real. You know, it's your life, you know, and it's happening almost like you're detached from it.